What's going on all of my healthcare providers? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I get a ton of questions about adult vital signs assessments and today we're gonna to start by looking at blood pressure. Let's get started. So let's talk about what that blood pressure assessment is going to look like. To begin, we really need to know what our normal ranges are. So when it comes to the average adult blood pressure, we're looking at a systolic of 120 or lower and a diastolic of 80 or lower. So the definition of blood pressure is the force on the walls of an artery exerted by the pulsating blood under the pressure from the heart. So that's a lot of fancy words. What exactly does that mean? So the heart's contraction forces blood under that high pressure into the aorta, right? So that peak of maximum pressure when that ejection is taking place is known as our systolic pressure. The blood remaining in the arteries when the ventricles relax, so after we push all that out and we relax, that um, force is known as diastolic pressure. So that's how we get our two numbers. The difference between systolic and diastolic pressure is also known as our pulse pressure. So based on the 2020 updates that came from the American Heart Association, we have different categories of blood pressure. So a normal blood pressure, like we talked about before, our systolic is going to be less than 120 and our diastolic is gonna be less than 80. As we move into that elevated range, we're looking at systolic blood pressures of 120 to 129 and diastolic blood pressure less than 80. So we're just starting to have that elevation of that systolic blood pressure. When it comes to high blood pressure, that means our hypertension, we have a couple different stages. When it comes to stage one, we're looking at a blood pressure between 130 to 139 and a diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89. Once we start to go into that stage two, our systolic is gonna be 140 or higher and our diastolic is gonna be 90 or higher. Now, we have something called hypertensive crisis. Now, this is really bad for our patients. So whenever we have these kind of blood pressures, we absolutely wanna make sure that we're consulting the provider immediately. So if we have a blood pressure higher than 180 systolically, or higher than 120 diastolically, this is what we consider a hypertensive crisis emergency. So let's take a look at our blood pressure assessment procedure. In order to begin, we need to gather the equipment we need for the examination. That's going to be your blood pressure call, cuff, I'm sorry, as well as your stethoscope. So to begin the procedure, you wanna determine the best site for assessment. You wanna avoid applying the cuff to an extremity which has IV fluids infusing or where there's some kind of shunt or fistula present. Um, you definitely want to avoid the side of which there has been some kind of breast or axillary surgery has been performed or on an extremity that has been traumatized or is diseased because you're going to get um, incorrect results. The leg may be used if the brachial artery is inaccessible, and the cuff is wrapped around the thigh when auscultating for the popliteal artery and wrapped around the calf when you're auscultating for the posterior tibial artery. Next, you wanna determine the factors that can alter test results, such as smoking and exercise 30 minutes prior to testing. If either one of these are present, then you're going to see a, raise, um, sorry, a rise in blood pressure. Patients should be sitting with their feet flat on the floor or in a laying position. Um, patients should rest for approximately five minutes prior to obtaining the measurement. And if the legs are crossed, make sure that the patient uncrosses them because they should not be crossed. Ensure the cuff is fully deflated prior to wrapping the cuff around the extremity, extremity evenly and snug. Use a stethoscope to listen to the artery over the desired cuff location. As you inflate that blood pressure cuff, you're going to inflate it until you can no longer auscultate the bounding arterial sound. Once you no longer hear that sound, you wanna make sure that you add 30 when you're looking at your gauge, so that way you're getting the appropriate blood pressure reading. You want to document the first sound. So that's gonna be heard as the blood pressure pulsating from the blood uh, vessel wall when air is released from the blood pressure cuff and the pressure is reduced on the artery. This is going to be known as your systolic pressure. Just a quick note, as you're deflating the cuff, you wanna make sure that you're only deflating it two to three per second so that way you can hear 
the changes in the sounds and base it off of your systolic and diastolic pressures. Once you no longer hear sound, that is going to be your diastolic pressure. So an additional blood pressure assessment that you can do is known as orthostatic hypertension procedures. So orthostatic hypertension is a low blood pressure in symptomatic patients who are otherwise normal tensive when raising up to an upright position. So this is performed in three different ways. The procedure doesn't change, but what you're going to do is you're going to check the blood pressure and the pulse rate with the patient supine, that means lying down, in a sitting position as well as standing up. Each reading should be taken one to three minutes after each position change. So next let's take a look at nursing considerations when it comes to blood pressure. So stress results in sympathetic stimulation that increases the blood pressure. So you might get high readings if the patient's very stressed. Hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, can be seen more commonly in African Americans than among Americans of European descent. Antihypertensive medications and opioid analgesics can decrease blood pressure, so it's important that you monitor those. Blood pressure is lowest in the early morning and gradually increases during the day, peaking in the late afternoon and evening. After puberty, males tend to have higher blood pressures than females. And after menopause, females tend to have higher blood pressures than males. I hope that these videos were helpful in understanding vital signs assessments. Make sure you check me out on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification so that way you're notified every time I post a new video. Go over to my website at www.nursechung.com where there'll be additional resources based on these vital sign videos. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.